We have several citizens' assemblies taking place uh, during the programme of the festival. Popular assemblies, I should say, uh, to include both residents and citizens of Europe. And we have popular assemblies taking place with local people living in Porto or in Portugal. And we have, of course, also the transnational assembly of uh, the process that we call Assemblies of Solidarity, where we bring people from the past 20 uh, local popular assemblies that we had across Europe, and they come and gather here together in Porto to build together the transnational assembly and to build together the Porto Declaration on Fundamental Rights. We have been organizing an assembly at the Lusofuna University, specifically with the international students. And this is very interesting and that's what uh, our partner at the Lusofuna University wanted to, to highlight, to give the floor to international students so that they can say what it feels like as a foreigner to be living in Porto, to be living in Portugal, what rights do they have, what rights do they not have, such as apparently very difficult access to healthcare. An EU country, a Schengen country, yet they don't have equal access to healthcare like Portuguese people do. We've also had a, a very enriching assembly at Valongo with the, the municipality of Valongo and that has been very proactive and uh, very uh, motivated to work with us uh, on this. And we had a popular assembly gathering some of the main groups of activists representing the underrepresented communities in Portugal, such as the Roma community, the Afro-descendant communities, the migrating communities. And those activists gathered together in this popular assembly in Valongo to work out together what do they think is lacking at the moment to support the civil society, to support the underrepresented communities in Portugal, and what should the institutions do at local level, at national level, at EU level, to finally commit to promoting the access to the rights of those communities, the equal access to their rights. So we've had 20 local assemblies taking place in a bit more than 10 different countries across Europe. And when we started doing assemblies in Portugal, I remember one one of the, the things that was mentioned by, by some, some uh, act activists and academics that we, we met in Portugal and in Porto was, you know, there's not really a need to organize a popular assembly with those communities, like, they're fine. Like, we all live peacefully, we all live together, like a one giant happy family. It's fine, we don't, we don't need really to, to do that. Of course, we, we, didn't, we didn't quite have the same uh, idea. We've done a very like, extensive and long-lasting over several months work of connecting with activists of uh, Afro-descendant communities, of Roma communities. And of course, those people, those activists, those representatives of those communities were like, Thank you for organizing this because we need a space for this and we need a space to connect. And I think in Portugal, that's why it was very important to organize popular assemblies here. The various underrepresented communities actually maybe don't have strong connections between them. And so they don't have the capacity to join forces to fight together for equal access to their rights. I believe that this is one of the main points that we, we brought uh, with the Trans Europa Festival is that we provided the space and the opportunity for those communities to gather together and to join their forces for more power.